This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us today on Libertarian Counterpoint. With me is friend of the show from the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, Mr. Leon Brathwaite. Leon, inflation is a big deal today, these days, right? And it's kind of the number one issue going into a into the election. And yes. yet the govern one of the candidates for governor of Georgia, what Stacey Abrams, right? This can only yes. come from someone like Stacey Abrams. Yes. Has a new cure for inflation, right? Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Got a brand new cure for inflation. Yes. Is, quite frankly, it kind of out of left field. She thinks abortions are the cure for inflation. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is, you, you, James, I, I, I sense from your tone, you, 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 you're being very skeptical. Isn't that a wonderful idea, you think? Don't, don't you? Let's uh, I mean, <laughs> forget just the, the moral issue of abortion for the, for the moment. I'm not entirely sure how, you know, not having more children, more adults 20 years down the road is going to cure inflation now. Today, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's really i mean you know if if we were if we want um on the on our knuckleheads of liberty um program we would have had this as probably one of our knuckleheads because that's what stacy abrams that's what stacy abrams is she's a damn knucklehead now you think about this for a second now you see what's going on right now and if you believe the polls i mean some of them are pretty good i mean not all of them are but some of them are pretty good there's this red wave forming, okay, apparently, and some people even saying a red tsunami. I don't know if that's going to come true, but it's looking that way. And they're hearing the Democrats coming, sounding desperate, like they, they, they want an issue to grab onto. Now, a few months ago, if you remember, the, the, um, a draft decision of the Supreme Court was, um, was leaked, and that draft decision said, indicated that the court was about to overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, as it turned out, they did. But prior to they actually issuing the decision, everybody knew what the court intentions were. So everybody were on the streets, marching up and down. People went to the justices' home, protesting and everything. How could they be doing this and everything like that? The base of the Democratic Party was all ginned up and ready to go. And they thought... And oh, by the way, um, there was even an attempted assassination of one of the Supreme Court justices that was Brent Ka Kavanaugh. But the Democrats thought they had an issue. They thought, well, oh my goodness, Gears, the base was all ginned up and ready to go. And we're going to get this thing behind us and we're going to take back the House and we'll keep the, keep the House of Representatives as a majority. As it turned out, that issue seemed to have died out. You look at the the polling data right now, the polling data is suggesting that the top issues are the economy, inflation, and crime. So what Stacey Abram now is trying to do now, now that abortion have kind of fizzled, I think it's like number seven or eight on the list of things. Now that it's a somewhat fizzled, Stacey Abram is now trying to link abortion to the economy. So if we have more abortions, it will solve the inflation problem. Now, like you said, even if that was true, it's not going to have an immediate effect. I mean, the thing is grotesque to even think about it, quite frankly. It's grotesque, okay, when you think about this. But this is what she's trying to do. She's trying to bring the economy into this abortion debate. And this grotesque woman and with her grotesque ideas is trying to tell us that if only we could have a little more abortions, just a little more, we're going to solve our inflation problems. God help us if these people are the kind of people that get elected office here in this great land of ours. Yeah, it, it's they've gone completely off the rails, right? We, you can believe what you want in abortion, right? That, yes. There's You can actually get to an, a moral understanding, an ethical understanding from various perspectives. At least I can. I can see the various issues. I have my own views on them, but you know, I can see other people's perspectives for the mm -hmm. most part. Yeah. But when you kind of make this insane leap of logic, and we'll just call it what it is. It's an insane leap of logic. <laughs> uh, James, I think I'm going to steal that. I'm not going to give you credit. Insane leap of, of, uh, insane leap of logic. I like that. Okay. Just, uh, how can we take these people seriously? But yet, here we, here we are 
in in this modern world where these are the people these are the best and the these are supposed to be the best and the brightest right yes these are the people yes. who are supposed to lead us through times of trouble and and they're supposed to make the decisions for us in our futures but yet they come across how are we supposed to believe anything that comes out their mouth i don't believe she believes this stuff for a second i don't believe i think she's just stringing words together at this point well right? this this is what this is what i, I was trying to say and I, t I i i totally agree with you I think there's a form of desperation on the Democrats right now. I mean, Stacey Abrams, um, she ran for governor of Georgia uh, four years ago against this very same guy she's running, a guy by the name of Brian Kemp. She ran, uh, she, she ran against him. She lost, and she was an election denier, even though the media never would never call her that. She said she she won. It was this voter suppression, this nonsense about voter suppression. She was that saying that just in. today, Leon. Just today, I, I heard a story about her still complaining that she really won the last election that, that because of voter suppression. There you go. Like they're talking about how the, the massive voter turnout and you know the early voting turnout. She says, well, there's still voter suppression going on. Yes. <laughs> so, so these these idiotic statements, these, as you call it, these insane, these insane leaps of logic is nothing but desperation. That's what it is, is desperation. Maybe. I, maybe you might be right that she, I don't. I, I don't think she really. She really uh, believes this. This nonsense, but this this desperation is beginning to show. And if you believe the polls, if you believe the polls, it is not looking good for the Democrats right now. So they, you know, they 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 throwing everything at 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 wall and hoping something will stick. Yeah, but who are they throwing at the wall to? Who who are they expecting to hear this? Right, because they're not talking to you and me. That's clear. <laughs> they're not talking to people like you and me. So who do you expect to hear this? Who is it that they're actually talking to? And do the people they are talking to actually buy this stuff? Well, obviously, obviously not. They are not buying buying this stuff. You see, you see, I think there is an underlying issue. I mean, I know the, the left-wing media is going to make something different out of this. Are we going to hear issues of race and all that kind of stuff and things like that? But there's an underlying issue going on here in this election. It is parents, okay? I think there's a parent revolt ongoing in the United States of America. And it was it come, comes directly out of the lockdown when parents realize what their kids are learning in school. So all this damn nonsense Stacey Abraham is speaking, she's talking to her base, but she's missing the big picture because the parents are revolting against the damn nonsense that's going on in the schools. And this is why Glenn Youngkin, who is now the governor of Virginia, this is why he won, because parents revolted. Virginia was, had become a deep blue state. And Glenn Youngkin, a Republican, won last year, about a year ago, he won. And I think that revolt is still ongoing. And Stacey Abrams and company is missing the big picture. They think abortion is going to take them over the finish line. It is not. The big issues right now is crime and the economy. And they, they don't have an answer for any of this. They don't. They really, really and truly don't. Their policies have really destroyed the inner cities of America. And they don't have an answer. So they're looking for anything they can find. They, like I said, they're throwing everything at the wall and hoping something will stick. But they are missing the big picture because they're not speaking to the average American right now, which are parents who are revolting against the damn nonsense that's going on in our schools and in, in, in society at large. Yeah, there's this habit that our uh, politicians have gotten to, into of only speaking to their base is going to come back to bite them, right? Yes. Is that is essentially what is going to happen. Very but, good point. Very yeah, good point. Yes. You, you brought up, we're going to move on because you brought up an interesting point, how we solve this, right? How do we, yes. in a long-term sense, right? Because this is, there's not a short-term solution for this. There's only right. long-term solutions for this, right? So, but you've come across, you have an interesting concept that's, it's about the public's right to know. And the yes. transparency in government amendment, Leon. I haven't actually heard. I'm someone who ran for office based upon transparency. Kind of Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Yes. But you've got an idea for a tra for a, an actual constitutional amendment to cover this issue, right? Yes, that is that 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 is what that is what I I intend. Now, this this um this uh, uh, transparency in government comes directly out of the public right to know. We must know. We must know what our government is doing on our behalf. That is a right, okay? 
And if you look at the Ninth Amendment of our Constitution, okay, which to me is one of the greatest documents ever written, it has flaws, but it's still one of the greatest documents ever written. If you look at the Ninth Amendment, it says that all unenumerated rights still belong to us. Okay, they do. So the public has a right to know. Now, the problem that we see in here that is developing and have been developing for probably the last 50 years in this land is the power of incumbency. We have incumbency in terms of the legislators and we have incumbency in terms of laws, legislation. So we right now, we have laws on the books that are 50, 60 years old. Nobody have ever gone back and started to review these laws and start to ask themselves, well, are these laws effective? We sit around here sometimes. I think, James, you raised this one time with me. Sometimes we are breaking the law. Sometimes three felonies a day, I think is what you said. We are breaking the law and don't even know it. There are rules and regulations that come from these laws. And we don't even know how we're going to live with them. They are just turned, I mean, if maybe if we look at all the, all the, all the laws and the rules and the regulations that come from those laws, they maybe will fill up my home and your home and maybe our core arena in the process. But this is the problem. The power of incumbency is crushing our liberties. So this is so we have to know what our government is doing on our behalf. We have to know it's our right. It is our fundamental right to know what the government is doing on our behalf. So every 12 years, no, every law, let me let me back up. <clears throat> every law that ever passed in this land should have a date of effect. We already have that. But it is also have a date of expiration or a sunshine date. It should have. And if the law is great and wonderful, they should review it. They should debate it and repass it if it is so nice and wonderful. If it's not, the law should die. And all the regulation that go along with it, it should die. That is our right. The right to know. And when they evaluate, when they debate, then we will know about what's going on in government and going what's going what these people are doing on our behalf. So we need to have some sort of term limits in general on legislation and on legislators because the power of the incumbency is becoming too great, is becoming too great in this land. It is crushing our liberties. So we need a transparency in government amendment, which broadly follow those requirements that I've just laid out. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to be, right? What is the thing? Um, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Exactly. But how are we supposed to be anything but ignorant of the law? What is it? In California alone, they passed, what was it, a thousand laws last year or something like that? That's not even the Some regulations. Ridiculous that number like that, yes. Yeah, that's not even the regulations that go with the laws. That's just the number of laws, right? And then you have yes. to pass all the regulations that go with those laws. And we're supposed to hold ourselves accountable to these things. But Tell how? me about it. This is how? This... how? Just how is it actually possible? How are they supposed to enforce these uncountable number of laws and regulations? So Tell they're just me this thing. Pick you know, based upon what the emotions of the day, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, James, just um a few days ago, I was doing my taxes. Okay, now I'm I don't want to be boastful here, but I'm an educated man. Okay, I have a master's, and I'm doing my taxes, the federal taxes. The damn thing is so cumbersome. I don't even know how the average citizen could do their taxes and do it correctly. You have questions that, I mean, I you, you need a damn PhD in English to understand what it is the question is trying to ask sometimes. Last year, last year, I made a mistake on my taxes and it ended up costing me maybe like some $2,000 or some kind of stuff and things like that. You know why I made that mistake? Because I was filling out a worksheet. The worksheet was so incomprehensible that I, I incorrectly answered one question and that ended up costing me a whole bunch of money. I was doing my taxes just a few days ago. Same problem, but this, this year I was able to handle it a little better. But the thing is, we have rules and regulations that are so cumbersome. I mean, this thing is destroying our life and destroying our liberties, our freedoms. The very thing on which this country was founded, liberties and freedom, 
these things are being destroyed because of the power of the incumbency, because of their ability to make laws and don't review them to see how effective they are. This is a real problem. Yeah, how Excuse free me. are we if a small mistake, honest mistake, filling out a complicated paperwork costs you thousands of dollars? There how you go. Free, how literally how free are you? How free can you be if you have to spend hours, our days trying to figure out your taxes? So you don't get so you don't get a two thousand dollar fine because God forbid you filled, you know, you accidentally misread the question and you put a checkbox in the wrong thing, right? <laughs> and, and that's all it was. I misread the question and I put the wrong check mark on the on the form and it cost me it cost me a whole bunch of money. Yeah, and so what's our way around that? You go off and you hire you've got to go hire H and R block or somebody, right? And you hope exactly. that they do it right. Because you're not because you're not Bill Gates who can hire a whole team of, of yeah. tax attorneys to go out and find you every freaking hole. <laughs> right. And so they get to hide in the complexity because they just hire people to do it. You exactly, and me, yes. we can't hide in the complexity. We just, we pull our hair out and have to go hire some. Maybe maybe you've got enough money to hire a tax attorney and you hope they can do it better than you. Right. That, right. It's just hoping. Well, I use, they can keep up of all the changes every year constantly because you can't. No, the average citizen cannot. This is just the point. All the rules and regulations that are issued every year and then issued without reviewing the previous laws and rules and regulations. These things are just destroying us. Okay? And it's just like I told you. I just told you. A, a simple check mark on a form. It was the incorrect one, obviously, based upon the tax bill I got. A simple check mark on a form that was so cumbersome that I couldn't understand it cost me a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, and I, I also had to pay interest and penalties on it too, also. This is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And I'm supposed yeah. to be an educated man. And the wondering why we're crime is kind of rampant because we're all criminals all the time now. And, yeah. <laughs> and we're all criminals all the time, so why not act like one? And you know, crime is is at the top of the, as you mentioned earlier, crime is at the top of the 2022 yeah. um, election list. It's kind of one of the people's priorities is let's deal with crime, you know, but haven't we set ourselves up for this? Well, we'll go on to that, to your, your crime is in a second, but have not we set ourselves up for that? If we can't, as an average citizen, it's literally impossible to stay within the bounds of a law. It's just impossible. Yeah. Well, isn't that going to have a, a, deteriorating effect on you know our will of our what's the word i'm looking for our respect for the law yes exactly i, I mean it, it, it's so it's it is so difficult to respect the law if you don't understand it this is a problem we don't understand it we have laws on the books that have not been reviewed for, reviewed for 50 or 60 years we have regulations in the books that nobody knows that they even exist okay and you know, it's not that I know, you know, we have this big, this, this thing in, 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 in our laws. And I think it, it, it is correct. I, I agree with it. Ignorance of the law is no excuse because I, surely I don't criminals go into court and say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that that, that was a law that I, I should be, um, I should not violate or anything like that. I don't want criminals going to court and making that claim or, or at least accuse uh, um, individuals. Yeah, going if you punch somebody in the face, we know that's against the law. Exactly. If, if you steal somebody's car, you know that's against the law. Yeah. <laughs> if you commit an act of fraud, you know that's against the law. Yeah. But if you misread a question and put the wrong checkbox on a stupid form, you don't you don't know you're breaking. You're, you're in good faith. You're acting in good faith. Exactly. Some goofy complexity. And that, that. and that is the point. That is the point. The average citizen who may read the very same form I was reading, acting in good faith, but made a mistake, end up being penalized for it. I, I, did, I was penalized. I had to pay interest and penalties on the, because of the mistake. Okay? But this is just a problem. Laws are placed on the books. <clears throat> they are not reviewed for long periods of time. And the average citizen is left out in the cold. So they, they, they may go there in good faith, just like you said, in good faith. And what happens? They made a mistake, and next thing you know, they're they're facing a huge tax bill, or they're facing some fine or some penalty because of a good faith error in in something that they were doing. Or this is the, the problem. 
Yeah, they're facing jail time because they're an Amish person who's selling butter and they're not supposed to, right? Exactly. This is, the, yeah, this is the kind of thing that happens. But yet, our inner cities are a mess. Yes. Right? Our inner cities are literally a mess. We've got um, shoplifting is now an organized crime. Pretty much. <laughs> At least in California and New York, right? Shoplifting is now organized crime. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and we've got, what is it? Crime, the crime is a, one of the top issues. We've just discussed the top issue. Democrats yes. want abortion to be, but it's really crime, isn't it, Leon? Yeah, of course it is. It, of crime and is. now inflation. And with this economic devastation, the recession that we're in, it's crime always goes up during the recession. So we've got these dual, actually, it's a tripod of yeah. crime, right? As we've talked about, we've got the culture of we're all criminals now, yes. which means why have respect for the law? We've got, and well, maybe there's four, Leon. We've got uh, disrespect of the law, you know, from defunding the police and that kind of rhetoric, if nothing else. Point. Yes, yes. Right. And then we've got, oh, uh, we we're just on the top of my head, Leon, what we were just talking about. Crime. You're talking about crime. You couldn't avoid crime, the, crime. Yeah, the aspects there's, of there's crime. Four, yeah, there's three or four legs of crime. And sorry, I'm trying to count. And I got distracted because I twisted my arm and it really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was kind of counting my fingers and I forgot. I can't twist my arm. <laughs> but you know, but you know, James, the, the, the issue is here that there, there are so many facets to this to this issue of crime. Okay. It is true that there's some crime going on in the suburbs also, but most of this problem is confined to the inner cities of America, in the large metropolitan areas like New York and Los Angeles, San Francisco. You know, these are the big areas. Well, here in, Sa uh, in Sacramento, we have our problems too. But we in the suburbs have, I mean, we, we are okay. I mean, we were, I wouldn't say we're totally safe, but we, 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 we are okay right now. The problem that is going on is that first thing you said there is about the disrespect of the law and disrespect of law enforcement officers. But this thing, this thing that of the disrespect of law, of law enforcement officers started with this defund the police movement. You know, this whole narrative about how the police is out there hunting down black men and they're trying to kill black men and all that kind of stuff and things like that. It is true that some police officers, there was some misconduct within, within the ranks of the, of, of the police service. There is no doubt about that. But what they were saying, what BLM and Antifa was trying to say was that there was some conspiracy against black people to kill black and to kill black people in this country? That is a lie. That part is a lie. I am not saying that the, the, um, Derek Chauvin, the man who um who, who killed George Floyd, he was wrong. I'm not trying to defend that. He was wrong. He needed to go to prison, and he is in prison right now. And that's fine with me. When police officers act in some way that is that is against the the very duty that they are sworn to uphold when they act in some manner that contradicts that i have no problem with their prosecution but don't exaggerate the case don't go out there and try to make every police officer the bad guy on the block and this is what this whole blm and antifa thing was trying to do they have really made police officers into the, this boogeyman and now people do, are disrespecting the law and law enforcement they're really disrespecting them. And this is creating problems. This is why we're seeing crime so much up because and in addition to, on top of all that, many of these jurisdictions have this thing called a little bail reform, okay? And you know what that is? No cash bail. So some guy is arrested, the police officers, they arrest some guy, he comes in for the judge and what the judge do? He let him back onto the streets. We have cases now of guy being arrested. I think there's one case where some guy was arrested like seven times in 24 hours or some kind of stuff like that. During the, during, that was during the, um, the, the, the BLM, BLM riot. And some of these crimes were serious. Okay, there's another case in Florida. Guy, no cash bail or some kind of stuff. Them judge let him out. The guy went out committing a murder. Some Things like that are happening. We have stories of that all, all over the country. But when you put them together, you put all these things, you put the bail reform, you put the the um the, the demoralization of the, of the of the police you start to see that fermentation that fermentation of a crime wave 
But another thing that is going on too, that is really problematic for us here in the United States, is this thing of selective prosecutions. Now, I am not here to defend Donald Trump, but that man has been the most investigated, most sought after by law enforcement that I've ever seen. I mean, imagine that this man was an ex, is an ex-president and they, the FBI raided his home. They have never done that to a Democrat. Notice, they have never done that to a Democrat. Then look at the whole issue of all this Russia collusion stuff. It was a lie. They went after him. They went after his campaign. It was all a lie. And they seem to be getting away with it. So there's this issue of selective prosecution. And on top of that, on top of that is this tolerance of lawlessness. Because the criminals, they commit their crimes, they do what they have to do, they end up before the court, they put, they put them back on the streets. And then we have these um, district attorneys all over the country. In St. Louis, we have Kim Gardner. In, in Manhattan, we have Alvin Bragg. In, um, in, in Philadelphia, we have a guy named, uh, I can't remember his name, but they're all over the country. And these people have this thing called restorative justice. And they are not even prosecuting certain crimes. I mean, I'm talking about violent crimes. They're not even prosecuting it. Um, this other um, fool in, um, in Chicago, Kim, um, Kim something in, in Chicago, I forgot, I forgot, Kim Fox. Kim Fox in Chicago. They had a shootout between two gangs in, in Chicago. One guy died. You know, not a single person has been prosecuted right now. You know what Kim Fox said? Oh, it was a situation where there was mutual combat. That's what she said. I'm not making this up. You could check it on the internet if you don't believe me. Mutual combat. And she's a district attorney. And I think she's a state attorney or something like that. Yeah, like we're supposed to have mutual combat. Mutual combat is normal in our inner cities. Oh, it's just mutual combat. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is madness. This is madness. So when we see all these, these insane policies and these in, insane leaps of logic, using your word again, James, <laughs> this is the end result, this crime wave. And this is what I'm telling you. Parents are fed up of this thing. And this underlying, underlying fermentation of, of a revolt is ongoing. And I think the parents are going to express themselves at the ballot box for two reasons, the schools and crime in our society. And of course, the economy is hanging over all of that. And this is why we're going to have the spirit revolt coming up here. And I, I really would like, I hope it will teach the Democrats a lesson. I really do hope so. But I don't know. I really hope it does teach them a lesson. Well, I hope it teaches everybody a lesson, but I do want to, we got just a couple of seconds left. I do want to point out that they have no trouble prosecuting crimes against policy, but they do have trouble prosecuting crimes against people these days. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. You violate a policy of the government, they will come after you. You punch somebody in the face, nah, it may depend upon whether or how they feel about you or the person you punch. So, you know, it's it's very weird so anyway that's all the time we have thank you for watching libertarian counterpoint thank you leon for being here with us with me today and we will see you next week and please remember to love everybody